Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks, and this is part eight of this, and maybe the hardest part, in a way, this rope border. We're gonna hold down the control button and make a circle, and then we'll get it kind of in the middle. That's pretty close. And since it's perfect, we're gonna hold down the shift key and just edge it in just ever so slightly. Tell you what we're gonna do, we're gonna click off it and change our nudge factor to 0 .001, because this pretty much needs to be dead on, I would think. So we're gonna nudge it up a little bit. And we're almost there, hold down the shift key and make it grow out a little bit. So we've got that done. This logo has some pretty good tricks and it. it's got like a black line around here. So we're gonna make another circle. And it's easy since you've already got this one in the center, just go control D and then hold down the shift key and we want this circle like right in the middle of that. And we'll use that later. Well, I must not have control D because it didn't make a copy. So we're gonna holding down the shift key so it'll grow out. We want it about to that rope. Now, one of these is in the middle. And I think it's this one right here. So we are gonna change our nudge factor back to two inches. And we're gonna nudge this thing out of the way and then over. And we're gonna take our two, two circles. You see I have my logo locked. So there's our two circles. So now we need to make this rope. Ropes are pretty easy in a way. And uh, you know, you could make a piece of rope a number of ways, but it needs to be just on the outside of this rope. So I'm gonna just make the ellipse and just make a little bitty non-oval. Uh, I'm gonna actually gonna turn it, rotate it kind of like the way the rope would be. And it's, I don't like working in a item this small because it's the hairline is so thick. But then we're gonna go to object and convert it to a curve so we can kind of manipulate it a little bit and make it look not like an oval. So we're just, and you could play around with this uh, as much or as little as you like. Let's see if we delete that node. And let's see if we delete that node. Yes, that looks pretty good. We'll uh, bring this out a little bit. And you could right click and turn that into a cusp. And then that way, when you bring this out, it'll look pretty good. And uh, we can't delete any more nodes. I don't really like that, but it's, you get the idea. Now I'm gonna hit P and put it on the keyboard or in the center of the page. And that's the only problem with this orange circle is not in the center. And so to correct that, let's just put everything in the center of the page. We can always move it back. And then I'm gonna take this part and I'm gonna start moving it and then I'm gonna hold down the control button. Now, I don't know how many pieces of rope there are. It doesn't really matter. Let's say, well, I'm not gonna take the time to count them. There's quite a few. And what we're gonna do, we are going to just control D and make a duplicate, double click on it, move the rotation of the center, double click on it again to make sure it's there. And then we're just gonna rotate it to about the next step. Now that's 4.7 degrees. That won't go into 360, so we're gonna make it five. And then we're gonna control D, double click on it and move this one 10 degrees. Now a lot easier way to do this would be to use the Docker windows, Docker's transformation and rotation and we're gonna change it to five degrees. And let's say we want, let's go, let's start out with a hundred. I don't think it's a hundred. That looks really pretty good. Now there might be some duplicates and there are, but uh, you know, one way you can always find, find out how many circles there are. We know we have two circles, right? Plus all these. So we select everything. We got 103 objects. So there's one more duplicate than it needs to be. And I don't know where it is, but we're not gonna take the time because we don't really need them. 
Now we need to make another circle. We're going to try to grab the circle. And if you see down here to the right, you got a hairline. We're going to control D and make a duplicate. Holding down the shift key, we want it to grow from the outside. Now we're actually going to take this inner circle and hold down the shift key and just have it grow from the inside. So that's going to be our rope border. And if you remember, this circle was actually black. Uh, let me close this window. It was like black uh, notches. So we do need to kind of count these. So starting right there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So there's 20 of them. So what we're gonna do here is take this line, make it a little thicker. And make it uh, two points. We're gonna make it in black because it is black. Press OK. And now what we can do is take a two point line, hit P, and there were 20 of them. So 360 divided by 20 is 18. So we need to rotate this thing 18 degrees. So we're gonna control D and make a duplicate of it and rotate it 18 degrees. That's gonna be our notch. But I don't, I don't know if that's going to work or not, because we actually need a, just a space between them. And it really might work. Let's try this. So let's just take that and control D and rotate it 336 degrees. 36 degrees. Control D, control D, control D. That might not be enough notches. But what we can do, and I hope this will work, we're gonna, we're nudge factor still set on two. Let's move that out of the way two inches. And let's move these lines out of the way two inches. You only have to do half of them because they're collecting and sending both areas of the line. Boy, two inches is a long way away. There, I've actually moved it down. So what we can do now is move this circle out of the back up and we'll weld these together and go to object and convert the outline to an object. And now we'll get that circle back. You just grab, well, can't do that. There we go, nudge it down. And what we're gonna, I hope this works. It should work and go intersect. Nope, that isn't what we want. Let's go front minus back. Nope. Let's go back minus front. Nope. That's what I did before, maybe. Well, it ain't working. Um, I was hoping because these are objects. Let's try one more thing. That's more or less what we want, but we're not getting there. So what we could do is take this line and can make it an object. And then left click, right click. Now this will be a little tedious, but it'll make it work. And you know, sometimes I make mistakes and people go, we like your mistakes. So what I'm doing, I'm filling it in. It's going to give us notches around. And I could have done this, but just one and then rotated it, which would probably be the really the easiest way to do it. But since I'm already coming around, let's just do it like this. Now, because our red lines are a group together, we can delete it and it didn't really work. Somehow we got a blue in there. So let's do it the way I was thinking about doing it. That's what I was doing. I was filling in with blue. So 
So what we can do, take the Smart Fill tool, fill it in with a black. This is what I wanted to do in the start. We're not working in the center of the page anymore, but we still have that center right there that'll tell us we're in the center. So I'm gonna control D and make a duplicate, double click on it and move it to the center of that. And then I'm gonna rotate it 18 degrees. Control D and just go all the way around. Now we should be able to move our, delete our red lines and we're getting that same effect. Evidently the hairlines aren't thick enough, but maybe if we take away the outline, what do you know? Even a blind squirrel every once in a while finds a nut. So you remember that we moved this out of the center, but we can still nudge it up to our drawing. So we're gonna have to put that back. Now the inside of our rope is, the inside of the ropes are yellow and then the outer part is a black. So while we're here, and this is something that's pretty cool that you can do. Let's turn this into a yellow. So let's get the smart fill tool and get the eyedropper and grab that same yellow and then put it, put it in one of those circles. Now you remember that we did it. Now we can move the center rotation to the center. This might be the worst video I've ever made. Go to Windows, Dockers, and Transform. And we can use that same apply. And look at that, it turned them all into a knot. Now the inside was black, so we can go and, I don't care if it's CMYK or anything right now. There's our rope. And there's our, so now we can maybe left click, no outline on both these. That doesn't look too bad for a rope. Now the only kind of problem there is, let's group this together, control G, control G, and we need to nudge it. Let's see what our nudge factor is, it's two inches. But we need to nudge it over, and if you remember we, we moved it up, so we need to move it down. And by that, I hate doing it, but we're gonna put it like right. That looks pretty good. Now we can nudge it over two inches, nudge our original back over and up. And that looks pretty good. Now we need to put in the wordage and it's kind of hard to see that. Um, well, the, the center, the center letters need to, need to be yellow too. So that'll help a lot. So we need to take the smart field tool and because we're right here, we can just grab that yellow and fill in that. So there's our emblem. This is gonna be the inside of the seal. I think we're pretty good on the notches, but I actually think there's a notch. Let me close that down. Like a, can't really tell, the picture's so fuzzy. And then it all it is is text a path inside there, the Hope County, which is really, really easy. Um, we could actually, <clears throat> and a lot of times, I'm gonna nudge that over two inches. I'm gonna go ahead and nudge all this stuff over two inches. Well, we can't really nudge the, those are individual, so we're just gonna leave them alone. But we need our Hope County right there on top of this. So we're gonna take a two point line or a ellipse holding down the control button and the shift. You know, if you start in the center, like we get the ellipse tool, 
and it tells us the center. If you hold down the shift and the and the uh, control button, you'll get a perfect circle. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna nudge that circle out of the way, and I'm gonna nudge all this back so we won't mess up. <clears throat> I actually need to take this and move it all the way over so I can see the words. So we need all capitals, I've run out of room. I think it's Holt County, North Carolina. So let's reduce this. And before I ever do anything like this, and I'm gonna make it a bold font, I would control D and make a duplicate of that font in case we mess up. And this is quite a bit bigger text and it might be long enough. And I don't even know if we're close on the text. I do not like doing this, but you can stretch the text. That might work. And if you remember yesterday, I made a hot key on control T for text to path. We'll put it on that path. We're a little bit long. So back up and make this a little bit smaller. Alternate T, text to path. And I'm gonna call it good. It actually needs to be probably a blue, but I'm gonna select it all go up to object, break text apart, and grab the Hulk County, North Carolina, and nudge it over that two inches, and then one more time. That doesn't look half bad. I mean, pick another font. The only thing I have left to do, and this would be really easy, is the nine E911 and this antenna, besides the seal and uh, without really knowing what that is, it's gonna be kind of hard, hard to reduplicate it. <clears throat> but so far, so good. Sorry that was such a long video. Hope that helped, thank you for watching.